the biblical truth of our hymn, Today, Away in the Manger, a carol for the birth of Jesus. The words are traditional, while stanzas 1 2 are Thomas McFarlane. Well, the, uh, excuse me. The traditional one stanzas one and two are traditional. Uh, number three stanza, Thomas Farland. Music by William J. Kirkpatrick. Although it was long claimed to be the work of German religious reformer Martin Luther, the carol is now thought to be wholly American in origin. So I was not sure where this has come from. And as far as the time of Christmas and Martin Luther, the reformer, the one who has cleaned the Catholic Church into the Lutheran Church, almost the same thing with different names. You got to remember, too, Martin Luther also brought to us Chris Kringle, the reformers, the Protestant Santa Claus, St. Nicholas. Verse 1 or line 1, the earliest sources have, as far as his hymn, the part where it says, no crib for his bed. It said it would be no crib for a bed is found in Murray's 1887. So this has been changed. Verse 2, line 1, the early sources have the poor baby wakes. In 1891, the baby awakes. Verse 3 is absent from earliest publications. It first appears in Gabriel's Vineyard Songs in 1892. Line 3, I mean verse 3, line 4, instead of take us to heaven. One popular cause would be found in 1899, fit us for heaven. Now the origin of the words are unclear. An early appearance was May March 2nd, 1882 in the Children's Corner, section of an anti-Masonic journal, the Christian Kynosaur, C-Y-N-O-S-U-R-E. <laughs> Under the heading, Luther's Cradle Song, as unidentified identified author contributed to the first two verses writing, the following hymn composed by Martin Luther for his children is still sung by many of the German mothers to their little ones. So, there's thought, there's speculation, and we're not sure. Away in the manger, that's where animals feed. That's where they eat. No crib for a bed. So a, a trough is where the baby Jesus. The little Lord Jesus. Oh, it's got Jesus in it. I'll give that credit. There's Jesus. And right underneath that stanza too, there's Jesus. Lay down his sweet head. You can take that, yeah. The stars in the bright sky look down where he lay. And with scripture, with revelation, and throughout scriptures in the Bible, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heaven hosting, praising God. And stars are Bible, uh, stars are angels in the Bible and angels <coughs> are types of stars so the writer has jumped us up ahead in typology because when you read in Revelation chapter 1 it says the seven star are the seven angels of the seven churches well, only a student in the Bible would catch that one Look down where he lay. So the angels in heaven that are in heaven, Jesus Christ who left the throne, is now in an animal feeding trough. 
And the angels have got to wonder, saying, what is going on here? Can you imagine? We can't imagine. We can't possibly think with sinful aspects that we are. Can't we not even proclaim, not even have an idea what God's throne is like? In holiness, in righteousness, even though Satan goes up to that throne. Though there are three, one-third the angels in heaven right now, there are Lucifer's, Satan's, the devil's, the, ser the serpent's, the dragon's, angels. The glory and majesty of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The great position of God's throne. And baby Jesus is laying where animals eat or feed or drink. The little Lord Jesus. Hey, he's got Jesus again. Asleep on the hay. I don't know. I don't know where he got the hay, but I guess hay rhymes with lay. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus sleep on the hay. And there's the problem with many of our hymns. In order to rhyme, Sometimes we got to do discredit to the scriptures so it can run. And that's a crime. The cattle are lowering. I don't know. Only part animals I see in Luke chapter 2 are the sheep being watched by the shepherds. I would not want to have a golden calf. I would not want to have an earring get, uh, get calf that Aaron made. I wouldn't want to have a holy cow. Cows are worshipped in India. The cattle are low. And that's what cattle do. They were doing that to proclaim to Samuel on the sins of King Saul. Oh, we saved the best of them. Look how great we are. But before that, I've done the word of God. And Samuel says, what's this lowering of the cattle I hear? Well, we kept the best. I can read to you over and over again, Luke chapter 2, and I read the birth of Jesus. And so it was, while they were there, the, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swollen clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them at the inn. While the same company, shepherds by in the field, keep and watch over their flocks by night. There is no cattle. There's no ox. A representation of the six. I mean, a representation of the cherubims. They have ox feet, split feet. I mean... We've got to add to a carol. We've got to add to a hymn. We've got to add to a song. Because if we sang just the Bible, it would be so boring, so dead. And we wouldn't have any verses. Now remember, line 3, verse 3, was added later. So if we didn't have no cattle or lowering, we'd just have one stanza, one line, and, and it wouldn't be popular. The poor baby wakes. I give that much credit. Mary and Joseph were not rich. When it came to her sinning offering of having the firstborn child, they could not bring the sheep. They could not bring the lamb. She held the lamb in her, in her arms. She had to bring the next best thing, according to the law, pigeons or turtle doves. 
which scripture or scripture would tell us they were not rich. A rich God born into a poor world. The fact is that there was no room for him at the end because it's a time of taxation. God had to call for a taxation to get Mary and Joseph to be where Jesus is supposed to be born, Bethlehem. And probably with the taxation, maybe, we don't know, but let's go to the poor baby that Joseph was wiped out even more. It was a census and it was a taxation. So the cattle are lowering, the poor baby wakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Where'd you get that from? What is this episode where the cows come home? Uh-oh. And they're mooing. And the baby wakes up. But he doesn't cry. Chapter, verse, and book, please. It's not there. Oh, it might be a good song. It might be, but... That's just as much bad as Jesus born on December 25th, and that's not scripturally correct. And there are other Bible errors. That men make up. The other day we were, we were talking amongst a group of men. And, that, and the question was asked. Was this phrase in the Bible. Was it made up? Showers of No not showers of blessings. Uh, I forget what it was now. Tears. Something tears. I looked it up. And it's something that man made up. It wasn't in the Bible. Veiled tears. When I was newly saved and growing in the Lord, and there was something about that time, I was 1987, the 80s and 90s, there was a thing in the Bible that says that the, the, that the eagle and the bear will lie down together. To represent that Russia and America are going to come to come to unity. And I looked for that in the Bible over and over and over. I never found it. I never find where the wise men show up with the shepherds. So, the cattle are lowering, the peep, the poor baby wakes, but the little Lord Jesus, he got Jesus in there. No crying he makes is nowhere found to be in the scripture. It's added. That's like adding wings to angels that are not there. And if it's not there, it's not in the Bible, does it belong in our hymnal? Does it belong for us to sing? Should children be singing? Give them in the mind that Jesus and cattle and it's not in the scriptures. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Look down from the sky. And stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Wait a minute. Look down from the sky and stay by. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky. Okay, Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. How did Jesus get from the from the manger back to heaven to watch over a cradle? Have we now taken our care and love off Jesus onto a, another human baby? And then we get sky, look down from the sky, till morning is nigh. Again, we've got a problem with rhyming. 
We've got to do a, a, a hymn. We've got to have a spiritual song. But i got to have a word that rhymes. It's wrong. As often as I try, I'm going to write a lie. Just to rhyme a word, sometimes it's wrong. And if it's wrong, it's not correct. What do you do? The biblical truth of our hymns. Here is a hymn, a carol, whatever you want to call it. It, it is going to be, and it probably has already started to be sung in churches worldwide today. And there are people who are newly saved. There are people who are lost. There are young children. What are we teaching them? Now, <coughs> excuse me, stanza three was added by John Thomas McFarlane. Be near me, O Lord. Wonderful. Great. Jesus. Hey, hey, look at that. I'll tell you one thing this hymn's got that many do not. Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. I ask thee to stay close by me forever. Amen. Fellowship. Sweet walking. He dwells with me. I am his and he is mine. I am a child of God by Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells in me. The only thing I would keep Jesus from walking close to me is when I sin. When I become unholy, which is quite frequent. And love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care. Nothing wrong with that. And fit us for heaven. Bible says he's working on us. We're not finished. We are a, a pile of clay in the master's hand that he's still <coughs> turning, still working. Sometimes he's got to take that clay and smash it back up and begin all over again because of our sins. Listen, we're not a finished product. I dealt with the one, one guy one time, oh, I never sinned, he said. I'm glad you're perfect, but you you got to be the only one because only Jesus Christ was sinless perfection. And my children. I've got two children. They're not perfect. I'm still got to mold and help them grow and guide to be Christians. Whatever age they be. Me. 50 years old, saved since 1987. I still have to grow and learn. I have not got it meant yet. I have not got it right yet. I am not perfected yet. Fit me for heaven. That's a wonderful prayer because what will be fitting me for heaven? According to the scriptures. I'm getting a brand new body that will never break down, will never sin, will never lie, will never deceive anybody, will never break a promise, that will never get sick, that will never have sorrow, will never have tears in New Jerusalem in glory forever. Fit me for that heaven. Fit me for the glory to be before Jesus Christ for all eternity. A perfect voice. Perfect singing. Where we would not to have make a joyful noise unto the Lord, make this joyful praises and glory and honor. That's not right now. Fit me for heaven. There is coming for the Christian the judgment seat of Christ. May we get more silver, precious stones, and gold rather than wood, hay, or stubble. And it takes work. It takes effort. It takes God. It takes prayer. It takes studying. It takes reading. It takes God for us to make wood, hay, stubble 
be put away for gold, silver, and precious stone. But you know what? I can guarantee there will be wood, hay, and stubble before me at the judgment seat of Christ because I am not perfect. But I pray there be more gold, silver, and precious stones. Fit me for heaven. And I may wear that crown. One gem. If this is one gem, I want to hear well done. That's fitting me for heaven. And the Bible says to be fitted for heaven is to be studied to show thyself approved unto God. Pray without ceasing to live with thee there. One day, I would not have anything to do with stanza number two. One, it's okay. Three is better. But, as I've said before, the hymnal, whatever hymnal you got in your church, that's not inspired. That is not the Bible. As much as we, or people put, if this is Martin Luther up on a pedestal, he's a sinner, he's a man, and he's got false doctrine just as much as we all got it. Like I said, he's got Chris Kringle. He's got where Jesus becomes the bread and the wine, the body and blood, just as much as the Catholics do, but it's just a different name. But when you got the Holy Bible, the King James Bible, you got the inerrant, without fault, without troubles, without problems, without error, the, the perfect, inspired Word of God. There's nothing wrong in the Bible. So when we take the Bible, the biblical truth of our hymns, we take the Bible and we put the scale with the hymns that we have. We find the errors of the way. Now they're all going to be wrong. They're not the Bible. But we have found some hymns that are gross and detest. What would you do with the way in a manger, you may ask me? I go stanza one and stanza three. I would say, all right, everyone, whatever number, away in the manger, we're only going to sing the first and last verse. <gasps> oh, man, that, that, that's a sin in some churches. Oh, whoa. He didn't say the first two verses and the last and skip the other. He didn't say that. Yes, I did. There are some hymns I would not sing entirely at all. There are some hymns here, Carol. The first and last verse we'll sing. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I haven't got started. I need, I need to get going, but the Lord gives me a work and all that. I'm going to work on my, making my own hymnal. And every hymn in that hymnal is going to be approved by the Bible. Where I would, if I could, remove stanza two. Or change place or add where Jesus should be. But the glory to God. And we can't get to the glory of God outside away in a manger. I'm just making a statement about the biblical truth of our end. We cannot get the glory of God if, if what we're doing doesn't glorify the Bible. Stanza 2 just takes us totally out far from what the Bible says. Stanza two, you could include the shepherds somehow, some way, sheep. Instead of cattle, wouldn't it be sheep? Because isn't Israel the sheep of, of God? You say, well, write one. I, I'm not writing nothing. <laughs> my, my study is studying the word of God, preaching and teaching. So, stanza one and three, no problem. Two, problem.